Welcome to the fifth vidcast for March 2011, the 15th this year. My name is um, John Diel. Uh, just in case you missed the email from me about the proposed UNET, that's Using New and Emerging Technologies monthly online workshop, you can still join the mailing list and respond to our planning survey by visiting the link shown at the top of the page. The survey itself is very much about arranging the workshops at times that the majority of you can attend and if necessary we may have to repeat it to reach our maximum audience and or provide you with a link to the recording. Um, we also would like to meet your needs by looking at the new and emerging technologies in your fields of interest and to give you a voice in uh, how we approach this whole workshops online. I should add for those of you who are not from the northwest of uh, England here in the UK that the workshops are available to supported uh, e-learning advisors. Um, if you do want to become involved and you're not a supported e-learning provider, uh, then contact me and we'll see what we can do about forwarding you perhaps the links to the recordings. Let's go to the uh, website, um, our usual uh, blog. Uh, what DL is happening, the address at the top of the screen, and we're going to have a look first of all at Click to Learn. Click to Learn is the result of um, several years of work so that learners have fun while learning, and in the words of the author, um, through the years that followed, it's fed and grew on the, the their wishes and suggestions, and consequently needed no other justification. If motivation is the key factor in the acquisition and assimilation of knowledge, the explicit requests of those it was directed to became the best reason to carry on with this project. I think that's an interesting quote. When you go onto the website as I have here, you're expected to take a look at the fact that the flash player is working and then click on enter site and it will open up in a new window. You do have the uh, choice here of uh, choosing English, French, Spanish uh, or Valencia. Um, I'm going to choose English. It says. Okay, as you can see, there is uh, quite a lot of sound effects here. Um, just click on open. You've got a choice then of requirements, a student's guide, a teacher's guide, the project itself and or the menu. I'm going to click on the menu and over the side here are the various options that you can access. Click Learn is, as they've already said themselves, far from finished, but they do feel it's comprehensive enough to be of some use to uh, other practitioners such as yourselves and to other learners. It is ideal for uh, interactive English content for family learning, ESOL, ESL, EFL and for functional skills. Uh, let's just take the level two here and hopefully uh, easy and let's take um, in the park. Hopefully this is going to work. It's loaded. Click in enter. What we have here are a number of words that obviously learners can actually access. In the bottom corner, let's just show you where I'm talking about, down there, all right, in the bottom corner, I'll just draw a box around it as well so that you can see it, there is the continuation button. Let me just escape from that. You'll notice it's got things like a bird, a fountain, flowers, bench, baby in, in a pram and so on. A nice discussion document. But when you go on to the next part, there is a fountain in the park. It tells you to click on the images these, re these sentences refer to. So we have to have a quick look and it would have helped if I'd have uh, noticed it before I started, I suppose. Uh, but somewhere in here there will be a fountain in the parks. Okay, here it is at the top. I'm pretty sure it's a drinking fountain. 
click on it and I've now got my one point. There's some ducks in the pond, I can click on the ducks, there's a man reading the newspaper, there he is up there. And so it goes on. So it, as I say, it's good for ESOL and other such things. I'm not going to continue with that. Uh, and we'll get rid of this. And we're back into the resources. There are lots of different resources on uh, Click and Learn. Uh, and I'm sure that there'll be something there for a number of you. Second find, 10 reasons why practitioners and their learning providers need to change. It's an interesting video clip here. Um, uh, learning providers are in many ways at the centre of this current storm, feeling the pressures of cuts, resource shortages and strained facilities. Learning providers can also find that there's a surge in enrolments and heightened demand for functional skills and workforce development that they obviously are ideally positioned to deliver and many of today's learners have never known a world without computers, wireless communications and internet connectivity that is becoming more ubiquitous by the day. Um, many of today's learners also expect more from their investment in learning and for it to be different and available for them 24-7. Online learning is a, a solution to all of this and this particular video clip by William Flynn who is a former community college leader in the USA who has seen many changes in the future of uh, learning and we'll just enlarge it and click on play. We tried to pick a catchy title. We haven't really succeeded in that so, 10 reasons why you, but more really your college, needs to change. Because I think in many ways, continuing ed workforce folks are ahead of the curve in a lot of areas in terms of change in higher education. Uh, the 10 reasons are going to fold into really three main areas. Talking about change of people, places, and some processes that need to... Okay, I'm going to stop it there. It is a video clip that's worth a closer look. And I'll leave you to take a look at it. the link, obviously, at the top of the page. Our third find today is Shepherd Software. We make learning fun. And this is chemistry games. There are eight online games uh, to teach users the chemical elements, periodic table, and more. I know there's a big debate about whether or not playing games enhances learning just as much as there is about science learners um, should have to memorise the periodic table. Now whether you think it right or wrong, in either case learners do play games and there are still lots of learning providers that make the latter, learning and memorising the periodic table, uh, a curriculum requirement. If that is the case, then you're in your particular learning provider. The Shepherd Software Periodic Table Games should be a useful study tool for science students. There are six levels, as you'll see here. Let's just go down the page. Can't get all six in at once. Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, there is uh, Evel. Level L, which is basically learning the elements of the periodic table. Let me just zoom in so you can see it better. Okay, level L, learn the elements of the periodic table by clicking on them. There's the beginner, where you have to click the correct chemical symbol for the named elements. Then there's the advanced beginner, where you type in the name of the chemical element being shown. Uh, there's the intermediate for drag and drop the elements onto their correct positions on the periodic table. There's the expert to type in the correct element. Only its atomic number will be given. And then there is the master where you can click on the correct element based solely on its atomic mass. That's quite a, a range of levels there. And the games themselves are... Interactive, I mean, so I'll just click on the very beginning one, he says. Hopefully that will um, come up fairly quickly. Here we go. Just gives you some instructions there about various parts about it. So if I click on hydrogen, hydrogen we get the uh, word being read out. It's talking about the element on the left-hand side here that you can scroll through and read all about it. 
Uh, it gives you the symbol, the atomic mass, etc. And you can do that with any of them. Uh, the volume's a bit loud for this, so I'm not going to click on any more for now. But you can see the sort of interactivity that you can get for that. Okay, I'm sure there'll be something in there for the scientists among you and or for your learners. Fourth find today. Uh, I hope very much that um, in the wake of the recent Japanese nuclear reactor crisis that I don't upset anybody by including this nuclear power plant simulator. The nuclear power plant simulator raises awareness about how nuclear energy is harnessed to generate electricity and what it takes to control a nuclear plant. The uh, game places users inside the control room of a small com commercial nuclear power plant, the object being to produce as much electricity as possible without causing a core meltdown. To do so, you need to run the plant to its limits, but you need to take care that you don't push it too hard or you'll get some damage. If you don't push too hard, it won't break down, but the energy output will be much lower. What you have to do as a, as a game player, I suppose, is to find the balance between the efficient energy production and safe handling of the equipment. Users... Um, have to adjust the control rods to produce heat in the reactor, the primary coolant to carry out to carry heat to the heat exchanger, and the secondary coolant to take the steam to the turbine. There's also a supply of emergency coolant if required. There are loads of gauges and screens and warning lights uh, that should keep users busy during the entire game. Um, Let's just click on uh, here, the instructions, if I zoom in, okay, you can see that the information is uh, quite detailed. There's the instructions where you can actually use the arrows to move up and down to, to read the instructions themselves. Um, and let's just zoom in again. Uh, there is a normal, there's difficult, where there's poor um, reactor and primary coolant loops, and you just click on the play when you're ready to play. Let's just do that. This is the, um, the details that are involved. As you move over the different ones, it gives you instructions about what's going on. Um, you can alter some of the various settings by just choosing um, the sliders on here. Let's just check that up to about, uh, I don't know, 60%. Uh, the primary coolant flow, let's just take that up as well. Let's put that on about 61%. And the secondary coolant flow... OK, and click Go, and we'll see what happens. The power output was low. Let's up the primary coolant flow and click Go again. Notice that the power outputs are climbing. The amount of power has gone up. And so you continue. I'm not going to go any further than that at the moment, but you can change the primary flow, the secondary flow, etc. Uh, there are warning lights, there are temperatures, there are, um, uh, the, the mouse over help obviously helps you to actually find out about the different elements. As I said, I'm not going to go any further than that at the moment. The next find, I suppose, is linked with that in as much as, here we go, it's... Um, a helpful chart showing exactly how much radiation exposure you may expect from uh, various things. Let me just zoom in again so that you can see. If you actually see, sleep next to somebody, the uh, amount of radiation you're going to get is fairly low. It's 0 0.05. Um, okay, living within and 50 miles of a nuclear power plant per year. Eating a banana is actually higher, uh, and so it goes on. If you have an arm x-ray, 
dental or hand x-rays uh, and a flight from New York to Los Angeles is even higher and so it goes on. It is an interesting uh, chart and in it perhaps puts some of the things that are being talked about on the television into perspective. Flubaru next. You can tell we're doing Web 2, can't you, because of the, the silly names that are involved. Um, multiple choice quizzes are still used by practitioners for a variety of purposes. Uh, and if you use multiple choice quizzes for any purpose, using Google Docs and grading it with Flubaru could save you a lot of time that you could then put to better use on other tasks. It's a free script that you can use to grade quizzes that you administer through Google Docs. Uh, it does provide you with step-by-step -step directions. Um, if we click to the next page here, it goes through step-by-step -step all of the different things that you need to do. I'm not going to waste time now. The link is at the top of the page. But basically, you create a multiple choice quiz using forms in Google Docs. And if you can do that already, that's fairly quick. You can take the quiz yourself. That provides the correct answers for the grading process, assuming that you know the answers. Uh, you then get your learners to take the quiz. Uh, you can embed the quiz, as you probably know if you've used Google Forms, into web pages. Uh, and provide learners with the URL as another option. You can embed them into your VLEs and so on. You then, having done that, insert the Flubaru script. Uh, you do that by selecting the insert menu on your spreadsheet and once the script is inserted, you can grade the quiz. And this is where it gets really nice. Um, you can get a report and analysis of the learner performance and the big plus, you can email the learners their scores uh, instantly. So you don't have to mark it, you don't have to send the email, it's date and time stamped when they did it, it's got their percentage marks and everything else. As I say, Flubaru is at the address that I showed you at the beginning and the guide is here at the link that was over the top while I was talking about it. Now, I hope that uh, those of you who do use multiple choice questions will go and take a look, because take my word for it, it is well worth having a look at. Next, it's for the work-based learning providers and FE colleges that cover retail. It's from ASDA. It's um, three resources, really. These are interactive resources. There's the interactive store, as you can see here. There's an interactive depot. And there is another one, and I'll come back to this in a minute, where you've got an Im a team huddle. Let's just have a look at the interactive store and... Um, the, the depot. Basically, if you go into the store, let's just do it. When you go into the store, you can mouse over different areas of the score to discover more, and you can double click to uh, look at different areas. So um, here we are in one section, there's another section, and so on. And it tells you about each session. So we're in George here, the fantastic fashions and unbelievable prices, etc. If you double click, it takes you into a typical supermarket. Okay, just waiting for it to load. There you go. You can actually spin round 360 degrees to look at the various elements. And while you're in there, he says, there it is, we've gone past it. There's a little label, you can click on that. It tells you about um, George itself, the fashions and other such things. You can scroll down and read about it, but you can also meet Dave. Okay, there's Dave. Hi, my name is Dave. Work for George. I've been there for three and a half years, and this is what... Okay, and it tells you all about his job and what he does, etc. Now, it's the same with the interactive depot. Or you'll find if you go to the huddle, link again at the top of the page, you'll probably find that Dave is there anyhow. And... Hi, my name is Dave. 
Well, for George, I've been there for three and a half. Okay, you get the same video clip. So you don't have to go into the store to talk to the people. You can look at them in the team huddle. The team huddle uh, link being at the top of the page at the moment. And finally for today, uh, Greening the Blue. Greening the Blue is the official United Nations platform for raising awareness about the importance of sustainability within the UN system. It's uh, a reservoir of useful information, including the animation uh, here, that shows how the UN staff helped to create a more sustainable workplace. Now, to be fair, the things that are mentioned in this video clip apply to any um, business. And if I just click on play and enlarge it. You don't have to invent the Eco Glidertron 3000 to cut your carbon emissions. You can just take the train instead of flying. You don't have to go this far to reduce your use of natural resources. Simply put your publications online instead of printing them out. OK, fairly simple. I'm sure that as learning providers, putting your publications online instead of printing them out would save you a small fortune. Again, I'm not going to sit and play the whole thing. You're quite capable of doing that yourselves, the link being at the top of the page. Before I go, just a reminder not to miss the next In Touch Live broadcast. The next In Touch Live broadcast will be on Monday the 11th of April 2011. It is from 12.45 to 1.15. Um, that is it for today. Um, I hope that uh, there was something in there to be of interest and of use to you all. And we'll be back again, presumably in April, um, to share some more finds with you and hopefully to find some technologies that will enhance your current practice and or allow you to do things that you currently can't do but would very much like to.